Welcome to Rossendale Rapid Fire. My name is Ian Corrigan, and today's video is on the Dissident Arms KL-12. So, uh, what is a KL-12? Well, it is a premium uh, shotgun, uh, specifically designed for uh, competition use uh, by Dissident Arms in America. It uses a base gun uh, of the Mollet Vepa, not to be confused with the Izmash or the Kalashnikov Concern Sega 12. Uh, it is a completely different gun. They look very, very similar, but they are not the same. Um, it uses uh, the receiver as a sort of base model, if you like, and then everything else is built on top of it. Um, as this gun has so many different parts to it, um, deviating from the original uh, Mollet Vepa shotgun, um, we end up with a quite a different thing. And it's a premium offering, and that means in UK uh, retail, that's around about £5,000 um, for this specific gun. So let's have a look at it in action. So here we go. No, the gun is a Magwell uh, style gun, so the magazine just slots in. If I could target, should do that again. Who doesn't like a nice bit of slow mo? Uh, so that uh, gun was being fired by the, its owner, um, Counter Pope, who's a open shooter in the British team for the World Shoot uh, 2018, um, and he calls his gun Helga. Uh, so you often see him referring to it online with that name. Uh, the colour scheme is one that he's chosen. He's gone for British racing green and orange. He seems to believe it in some way that is uh, a British colour scheme. I'm not sure about that myself, but uh, um, it is what it is. The gun doesn't have to come in that colour scheme, you can choose a lot of different colours. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop over to the website, have a quick look at uh, some of the different colours available and some of the options that are available for this particular gun. So what's the difference between a Dissident Arms shotgun and a standard Mollet Vepa? Well, it's all to do with the race prep that they do with the gun. Uh, this image here is quite a good illustration of that. Uh, as you can see, all the individual parts are, are different colours. The two-tone effect uh, really does show you that they've, they've definitely painted it. Um, but it's not just painting. So they take the gun apart, completely strip it, um, and they race prep a number of the diff uh, parts of the gun. So the bolt carrier, uh, the bolt, um, they do some work on the trigger. Even though that trigger is actually a replacement uh, trigger by ALG, uh, they do work on that. Um, the race prep, the um, the safety catch, so it's much lighter to move, um, and they do uh, quite a lot of work in relation to the barrel and uh, the chokes. Um, that's the key difference here in this uh, gun is that it's completely race prepped. Now, some people might say, "Well, what's wrong with the original one?" And I, I you know, there's not a lot wrong with it, an original uh, Mollet Vepa. They're absolutely fantastic shotguns, but you have to bear in mind that these guns are made um, specifically for law enforcement and military use. Um, reliability is key in that scenario. Uh, they don't necessarily run an awful lot of rounds through them and they don't have any of the sort of speed modifications that you might want um, uh, as, a, as an IPSC or a three gun shooter. So that's the key difference is that this has been prepped and ready, uh, made ready for racing whereas a standard gun is, is, is just purely uh, as it comes out of the factory. So the key feature, I'd say, of uh, of the uh, Dissident Arms gun is up at the front end. So the Dissident guns have had a Briley chokes fitted to them, um, and they're very thin wall chokes that allow the installation of a muzzle brake using the existing external threads. So there's no clamp-on brake here, it's, it's threaded onto the gun. And that means that as an overall length, the whole gun can be 24 inches. Um, and that means that you can have a muzzle brake and a choke. And that's kind of unusual for these types of guns because normally, as they've got external chokes, uh, again, think of law enforcement, military, um, you either fit a muzzle brake or you unscrew it and then you fit some chokes. Um, it's not really necessary to, to have a sort of 
both on a gun um, but as the IPC rules and the three gun rules allow you to have muzzle brakes and most of the time you'll have sort of no shoot targets um, and wanting to be containing your pattern um, the ability to have a muzzle brake and a choke simultaneously is what sets this particular gun apart um, why can't you just do that yourself? Well, the issue is you actually have to take the barrel out of the gun. It doesn't come out easily, um, and it's not something that's uh, that I've seen anywhere in the UK uh, is able to take on board and to be able to, to do. Um, that's probably the key thing that makes this gun particularly different and quite hard to copy as well. You can't just sort of say, I'll, I'll just paint up a, up a mullet and uh, it'll be just the same as a, a KL-12. Um, this in itself is, is makes the gun really quite special. Okay, so clicking on uh, the spec list uh, on the website, you can actually see all the different things that have done. So the column on the left is uh, is the KL12. Pretty much everything that can be done to the gun is done to it. Um, so that includes the uh, handguards, the amb ambidextrous mag releases, ambidextrous safeties. Um, you've got the uh, the charging handles. Uh, all sorts of bits and bobs that have been added to the gun uh, to make it a far more uh, sort of race ready gun. You've also got the lengthened uh, forcing cone, you've got the internal Briley chokes um, and you've also got uh, the choke wrench that goes with it um, and a few other bits and bobs in there as well. So the, the black Teflon uh, full-on colour scheme or you can have a two-tone colour scheme. So an awful lot has been done to the gun to make it race ready. Um, sort of budget if you want to uh, say that so if you say $2,500 is a budget or $2,000 sorry uh, is budget um, or £3,500 um, has a few less bits uh, done to it and that's the CR12 you can pick and choose what you want so if you don't want all of the things on a KL12 get a CR12 and add on your, your extras I think if you do the maths on it I think you'll find that uh, the KL12 is actually a much more sort of competitive cap package in relation to overall costs so starting at the back you've got an XLR Industries AR15 uh, buttstock. Uh, this is a sort of custom buttstock that's uh, very popular with snipers and people that want uh, this stock to fit them exactly same time every time. Uh, so it's got a, a buffer tube that's been mounted to the gun allowing it to uh, fit there and you've got hoe grip um, with the uh, sniper plinth on the bottom again making uh, mag changes a little bit easier as you can kind of just get a little bit of extra grip on the gun. Um, you've got an IPSC safety catch there uh, so that's uh, able to be thumbed off uh, with the sort of the side of your hand. Um, mag release uh, on the left hand side of the gun allowing it to be thumbed off with your thumb uh, so just pressing with your thumb drops the mag. Um, ALG trigger uh, you've got uh, custom um, dissident arms flared magwell key, custom key mod uh, 16 inch rail and of course their, uh, their brake You've got the custom guns uh, US made version of the GK03 in aluminium to reduce weight. You've got the aluminium uh, key mod handguard on the front here. Uh, there are other options available. This one that uh, sort of Kansh has gone for. Um, you've got a left handed charging handle, so it comes out the left handed side of the receiver. And you've got uh, a right thumb mag release, and this means that the gun can be. Uh, reloaded and recharged purely from using uh, uh, your left hand and keeping your right hand on the pistol grip. So in the center we've got um, uh, pretty much where everything's going on. So you've got the um, the ALG trigger. So this is a, a custom trigger that's manufactured to give a single stage on a Kalashnikov style shotgun. And uh, that's, if anybody's shot a, um, a Kalashnikov they'll know that it's quite a trigger creep. Um, and they're not renowned for having a very crisp trigger. So single stage on this with its lightning bow, which is the sort of curved shape, um, gives you a very crisp uh, release and it, it definitely does make a difference to the shot to shot. Um, you've also got uh, on the right hand side, you've got the, um, the mag release. Standard um, sort of extended mag release uh, that you'd find on any mullet, um, but with a, a sort of lever that's pressed with your right thumb. So you can have your hand on the pistol grip, you can press the mag release with your right thumb, uh, dropping the mag and then reloading, already grabbing the mag with your left hand. Uh, it speeds things up there. You've also seen in the center, that's the IPSC extended uh, safety catch. Um, it's very, very light. So they've done a lot of modification to make it a very light safety catch. It's not unsafe in any way. It's just simply very easy to, to, to flick off um, and uh, sort of flick on if you want to. Um, 
meaning it's uh, it's ready for that sort of um, you know ready to to meet the beep. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the internals. Um, at its heart, this is a Mollet Vepo, which is an AK pattern firearm, so it strips down the same way, just check chamber. Um, uh, as it is a, a Mollet, uh, the uh, the top cover is remains attached. Uh, it doesn't come off like uh, perhaps uh, an AK that you might be familiar with. Um, bolt comes out very easily. Um, you'll note that uh, the uh, color-coded sort of internals there, you can see the, uh, the trigger. Um, and also you can see the uh, the custom uh, buffer spring system. Um, the uh, gun is uh, manufactured in such a way that they've sort of shaved the bottom of the bolt um, so that it, the rounds can be loaded uh, in a full magazine on a, an empty chamber and you can still rack the action. Um, Many of these features can be done to your own uh, uh, own equipment, so you can send them your bolt carrier, for example, and they will fit uh, that left-handed cocking. Um, they can modify the bottom of your bolt. Um, it's all services that they do offer a standard uh, if you want to ask them. Okay, so I mentioned earlier one of the more unique aspects of this gun is its chokes. So the gun uh, is being fitted with Briley thin wall chokes, um, and they are designed to be fitted within uh, the uh, the barrel, um, as opposed to sort of external chokes, as you'd see on most uh, AK pattern shotguns, uh, and that means that you can have an externally mounted muzzle brake. Uh, that might not seem that special for because other guns might have clamp on brakes etc but it does mean that uh, using this uh, unique tools that uh, come with the uh, uh, the gun allows you to change the choke internally um, the tools uh, set up such a way that you can sort of pop it down into the gun and then take the choke out uh, vertically so you don't have to turn the gun upside down and shake it so it's a great system um, and it's definitely something that's worth uh, considering if you're looking at any AK pattern shot. Quick note on magazines, these are factory mullet magazines. Uh, you can also sell a mullet magazine because the stripes are horizontal, um, whereas Sega mags are always uh, vertical. Um, you can use SGM magazines. Um, they don't really need much modification, uh, but uh, uh, a lot of people do prefer the um, factory mags mainly because they've got steel feed lips and means they're a little bit more reliable. They are more expensive but if you're spending £5,000 on a shotgun um, a few extra pounds on a magazine doesn't seem like much. And there you have it, Kanch Pope and his beloved Helga, uh, the uh, Dissident KL-12. And I'm sure you'll agree it's a very effective tool. Uh, the shotgun's not too bad either. Uh, if you've got any questions on this, uh, I'm sure you'll be able to catch up with Kanch or uh, check out our Facebook page or our website. Thanks very much for watching.